Talus, the ancient Greek humanoid robot that protected the ancient island of Crete. This is uh, an example of ancient advanced engineering. Well, we know that uh, there were, for, the t for example, I remember recently making a video on this, on the throne that Solomon had in uh, ancient Israel. There were many steps leading up from the ground level to his throne, to his seat. And in the, on each step, on both sides of the step, there were lions, lion statues, which were actually robotic. And when the king went up each step, they would bow in front of him and lower their heads. This would go on on every step that he was taking towards his throne. So if that was the case in ancient Israel with Solomon's throne, you could imagine what was going on in the ancient world. They had robotics, and we don't know what else they had. But um, this is just one of the tales. Uh, okay, let's call it a myth. But uh, one of these images is from the movie, the Hollywood movie, 1963 film, Jason and the Argonauts. In the modern world, we have obsession with technology, but it's surprising to know that the first human robot was to be found in ancient Greece. Talus, the humanoid, uh, for some reason they made him look like a human, with the intelligence of a human, a huge bronze giant, and he was the protector of Minoan Crete. And he can claim to be the first humanoid robot in history brought to life by the 1963 film production Jason and the Argonaut. He was portrayed as 70 meters tall, that's over 200 feet tall, and a very fearsome mechanical mechanized warrior. He was not born, he was created, either by Zeus himself, they said, or the craftsman Daedalus, or even Hephaestus, the god of fire and iron by the order of Zeus. We have coins here found in the Menon Palace of Festos in Crete. Talus is portrayed as a young naked man with wings. A myth has it that the wings were given to him to uh, have speedy flight so that he can circle and circle the whole of Crete. He was to do this three times a day as he was hovering above Crete, taking a look that everything was secure and that Crete was not in peril of any impending uh, enemies. Talos' body was made of bronze. He had a single vein that gave him life, starting from his neck, ending down to his ankles. But instead of blood, he had a molten type of a metal that flowed through his veins, and in his ankle was a bronze nail, which acted like a plug or a stopper, to keep the metal uh, flowing in his veins to give him uh, life, you know, life-giving type of a liquid to this robot. Talos's job was to protect Crete from outside attacks. He would not allow ships to approach the island and he would hurl giant rocks at them to uh, keep away the potential invaders. If an enemy managed to land on the island, Talos's body would heat up into a glowing red and he would kill the invader with a fatal embrace. This is what myth says. And it has it that after killing Crete's enemies, he would break into sarcastic laughter. Talos was not only protecting Crete from outside enemies, he was also the protector of citizens from all kinds of injustice. He would tour Cretan villages three times every year, carrying on his back the bronze plates inscribed with divinely inspired laws. And their purpose was to ensure that these laws were observed in the provinces that he inspected. So this bronze hero of Crete symbolizes technological development in metallurgy in prehistoric Minoan years. And they had reached such a high level that they created with their imagination this bronze superhero to protect them. Another very important property that Talos has was that he was a servant of justice much like today, superheroes like Iron Man, revealing the importance that the people of Crete attached, were attached to uh, justice. Let's remember that the people of Crete were giants. 
and these were the uh, Philistines. The Philistines actually came from Crete, and you can see that in the Holy Bible in the Old Testament. The Philistines were Cretans. They were from Crete. They were giants, and they also had, you know, like Goliath and his brothers, gigantic uh, heights with six fingers, six toes. That was Goliath and his brothers. So this is Talus, the bronze robotic humanoid, the what is known as the first robot of uh, intelligence of the ancient world. The mythical bronze giant, the first robot in history, protecting Minon Crete from would-be invaders. Talos is one of the best-loved legendary characters in the ancient world, one of the most important Greek myths. How was he created? He was not born, but he was made either by Zeus or, according to versions of the myth, by on Zeus orders by Daedalus or Ephaestus, who was the uh, uh, a semi, uh, uh, a demigod of fire and iron. Ephaestus, Ephaestio, means volcano in Greek. Now, the giant Talos, a golden dog which never lost its prey, and a quiver of arrows which never missed their target, were the three gifts of Zeus, the greatest of the gods to his beloved Europa, who gave him three sons, Minos, the legendary king of Knossos of Crete, Radamanthes, and Sarpedon. And on coins found in the Minoan palace of Festos in Crete, Talos is depicted as a young naked winged warrior. Wings may explain his great speed, that he could travel around the whole of Crete three times a day. Externally, Talos resembled a, an enormous man whose body was made of bronze. Now, in, in this video, I have pictures of the bronze statue that was guarding the uh, ancient port of Rhodes. Rhodes is another island of the Aegean north of Crete. So, uh, you know, they, had, they did have gigantic uh, um, st bronze statues in various locations of Greece. So, now, uh, the talus, externally talus resembled an enormous man, the body made of bronze. He had a single vein of molten metal, giving him life running from his neck to his ankles. A bronze peg in his ankle stopped the life-giving ichor. Ichor means uh, liquid, from pouring out. Talus, unsleeping guardian of Crete. His task was to defend Crete from invaders, circling the island three times a day flying over it, that's why he has wings. No traces of walls protect cities in Crete that have been found. No walls protecting the cities. And where usually you do have ancient cities having walls around them to protect. And also, of course, the people would um, enter the city and at night close the gates and uh, the gates had watchmen and nobody was allowed in unless they had special permission to secure the city. They had walls and gates. So, the island had, uh, the cities had no uh, walls. Talus did not allow any enemy ships to approach, hurling massive rocks to sink the wooden ships of those who dared to threaten Crete. If any managed to escape these and set foot on the island, on the land, the nasty surprise lay in shore for them, Talus entered, entered a fire until his bronze body was red hot. Then he clasped his enemies in a tight embrace, burning them to death. The, there is a tradition that certain Sardonians from Sardinia in Italy met this fiery end, and their bodies were found with their mouths wide open in agony and horror. The legend says that whenever Talus crushed or burnt enemies of Crete, then he broke into laughter. This may be the origin of the expression sardonic laughter, the scornful mirth of the winner of the contest who boastfully mocks the losers. And Talus, the, the protector of law in Crete, not only from enemies, but also from any kind of injustice, he went round all the villages of the island three times a year, carrying on his back bronze tablets inscribed with the divine laws. They aimed to ensure that the laws were kept in the provinces. And the bronze tablets he bore may be a la later attempt and a logical explanation of why he was thought to be made of bronze. In the cities, justice was dispensed by Radamanthes, 
and after their deaths, he and his brother Minos became judges of the souls in Hades, symbols of absolute justice. The death of Talos, Talos managed to defeat the enemies of Crete for many years until his time finally came. Of course, a bronze robot could not be killed by arrows or other weapons, as it was invul invulnerable, but uh, nor could it be succumbed to old age. Talos was killed by trickery. The legendary ship Argos, bearing Jason, Medea, and the Argonauts, had a perilous journey past the Hellespont. On reaching the south coast of Crete, the Argonauts wanted to beach the ship, rest, and obtain supplies. And let's not forget that they had already been to Cholkis, where Jason stole the Golden Fleece, with the aid of the witch Medea, the daughter of King Etis of Cholkis. Now, on leaving, he took with him both the fleece and his beloved Medea. The tale tells that Medea was the niece of Pasiphae, the wife of Minos, the, hence the queen of the Minoan Crete, which may be why they chose Crete as a stopping place on their legendary voyage. On approaching the shore, however, they were faced with the bronze giant Talos, who hurled rocks at them. The ship was in danger of sinking when Medea took over. She went to the side of the ship and began to talk to Talos. Chanting spells and promises, promising him eternal life, she deceived the guileless Talos and persuaded him to remove the bronze peg from his ankle. And all his quote-unquote blood, his uh, robotic juices, ran out onto the ground and he fell lifeless. There's a second very similar version in which Medea looked Talos deep in the eyes using her magic to drive him mad as he ran up and down in a frenzy. He struck his vulnerable point. The bronze peg snapped and he fell dead. Now, what Talos symbolizes through myth? The bronze hero symbolizes technological development in the field of metalworking and prehistoric and Minoan times. The Minoans were so advanced that they imagined the bronze superhero to protect them. Another major attribute of Talos was the upholder of justice shows how important justice was in ancient Crete. It was no coincidence that the laws were considered divine. Minos received them from his father Zeus, so they had to be obeyed. Let's remember that the Antikythera device, that uh, computer that measures constellations and how, they, um, how the Earth uh, go. Um, how, how space, how the constellations uh, travel through time, the Antikythera device was found north of Crete at the island of Antikythera. That island is just north of Crete. That's where we recently had the sixth magnitude earthquake, just south of the island of Antikythera, between Antikythera and Crete. So we know that they had advanced technology. We know that they had. This is, uh, you know, the Antikythera device is not a mythology, it's not part of mythology. So I'll leave links below for you for this. I thought this was very interesting. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on, not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.